Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am French Chad Pearson, and welcome again to my channel. It is October 11th, October 11th of 2024. Happy Friday, and let's say it together. Praise our God from whom all blessings flow. I have 10.34 in the p.m. Earlier today, I ran into a video where former President Barack Obama was uh, addressing some black men. It appeared to me that he was scolding or chastising them about not having the same furor or enthusiasm in supporting Democratic nominee for President of the United States, Kamala Harris. To me, he challenged their manhood. He challenged them that why would they not support, why would they sit out? After all, she's a, she just like you. She went to college with you. She identifies with you. She knows your struggle. How dare you? Can I talk to you as men? You supported me. What happened? Audacity. The audacity of him to come to black men and approach them in such a manner. I want you to listen to this and then I will continue. Speak some truths if you don't mind. Because my understanding, based on reports I'm getting from campaigns and communities, is that um, we have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to the all directly. And say that when you have a choice that is this clear, when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences, who's had to work harder and do more and overcome and achieves the second highest office in the land and is putting forward concrete proposals to directly address the things that are vital in our neighborhoods and our communities from housing and making sure that our, our, our mothers and our fathers and our grandparents can afford medicine. And, and making sure that we are dealing with prices that are too high and rents that are too high and, and are committed to, is committed to making sure that we maintain the Affordable Care Act so everybody's got help it and cares about things like education and entrepreneurship in our neighborhood 
And that's on one side. And on the other side, you have someone who had consistently shown disregard, not just for the communities, but for you as a person. And you're thinking about sitting out? <laughs> I've got a problem with that because, because part of it makes me think, I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. Mm -hmm. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. I think anybody you are talking to in a barbershop, anybody you are talking to in your house, in your family, at, a, at church, who is coming with that kind of attitude, I think you have to ask them, well, how can that be? Because the women in our lives have been in our backs this entire time. They've been raising us and working and having our backs. And when we get in trouble and the system's not working for us, they're the ones who are out there marching and protesting. And so now you're thinking about sitting out or even supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you? Because you think that's a, a sign of strength? Because that's what being a man is? Putting women down? That's not acceptable. We are listening to a former president of the United States. We are listening to someone trying to sell to us in this political climate. We're listening to someone who says that he's hearing these things out in public that a black man cannot accept a black woman or a woman of color to run for president. Maybe, just maybe, Barack Obama, the the baby that Bidenomics and Harris have delivered to us is a monster baby. And we don't want to raise it no more. You got the audacity to come and chastise us in an America we are trying to make it. When you have someone who has historically locked us up At the crack of a whip, quicker than master upon that once upon a time book from Alex Haley, Roots. Remember Toby? Round him up.
That was Kamala Harris back in the day as DA. You think we forgot about that? Audacity. When you have someone who was appointed border czar and didn't arrive there for over 1,200 days, then arguably arrives at the border two months before the campaign ends, expressing her concerns for the American farmers who deal with this illegal madness every day. And a border control, a faithful, honorable, patriotic border control that in their hearts and minds are frustrated to the core. Not to mention all the border states that have endured this nightmare. Audacity. When we see our fellow brothers and sisters who are homeless, our veterans in tents, seeking shelter and hospitalization, food, folks down on their luck, taking these drugs that have come across the border along with the migrants. When we see black and brown neighborhoods and slightly on the outskirts of our already economically strapped communities being infiltrated by illegals due to the policies of Biden and Harris administration. When we see illegals getting shelter, food, medicine, and other benefits, while our black and brown communities have never been given a hand up. And as we pay our taxes and serve in your wars, Mr. Obama, we we were elated that during the month of November of 2008, you became the first black president of these United States. We was rolling with you, baby. Felt we finally had something. That we advanced. Many folks cried that night. But as time went on and reality spoke to us, we realized we just had symbolism, not substantive policies that would impact the growth and stability of our communities. Audacity. We realized that crime actually was being encouraged by our democratic DAs and the courts, affecting our communities, that the woke policies were and are detrimental to us black people and American communities as well. And now after you promise hope and change, you campaign for a man who's now spent 36 years as a Delaware senator. Eight years as your vice president. And now three and a half years as president. Then he tossed the torch to Kamala, who didn't even make it to the Iowa. You said she, you said she worked hard? You said we should identify with her? You said she knows us? 
with all due respect, Mr. Obama, the black community is tired of the Democratic Party and its symbolism. We're tired of being used for votes. As you place black folks in key positions, ain't that what Joe did? Supreme Court, VP, go down the list. Symbolism, naming streets after us, having ceremonious moments for us while our tummies and hearts cried for opportunity. But Bidenomics crushed the hell out of us. Audacity. You see, the vast amount of us black folks, we were overlooked. Our neighborhoods were overlooked as you played the symbolism game. At the same time, impacting us with the illegals. We're tired of folks like, <laughs> like you, coming into our neighborhoods and our barber shops and our beauty shops, our community centers, talking about you not understanding why you don't see the same amount of energy and enthusiasm as we blessed you with. You're shocked because it's a lack thereof towards a female of color? Really? We would rather take our chances with a white man whose past shows his policies, ideas, and leadership doesn't stifle our growth. So you want to keep it real, Mr. Obama, tonight as you try to chastise us? Trump showed us the money. Biden and Harris took it. You're not seeing a turnout from us because you turned us down. Oh, yeah, you... You turned us down. You neglected us. The equivalency, the equivalency of a lie. False hopes and shattered dreams. You captivated us, molded us, then played with our emotions. Hope and change, that's what you said. Baby, this game is over with. We done. You become so confident in your okie doke approach that you thought you could waltz right up in here one more time and jive talk us. You're so caught up in your view that We're not going to move gracefully for Carmela because there's a woman for president? Is that all you got? Audacity. Black men know. We know a woman can handle business. We know that the majority of our large cities in the U.S. of A., over 50% or more of the households have a woman as a head of the household and either an aunt or a grandmother as a support system. That's not it, Obama. Forget about this guilt trip you're trying to put us on. You're way off. You're way off base, and you're out of touch, baby. 
and you're mentioning denigration? Are you serious? <laughs> denigration. Presently, there's nothing more denigrating than for me to work my butt off. Attempt to try to get a college degree or just have a diploma. Work toward buying a house, barely paying student loan back, along with my rent, my car note, my gas, my insurance, and food, 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 the essentials. You know, Biden and Harris have dumped. 10 million or more illegals in America and they get the silver platter treatment and you talking about denigration? <laughs> You're insulting Obama. You've underestimated us, which means you don't know us. And you're telling us we think not to support Carmella, our definition of what a man is? By us not supporting her? In your mind, you think that we're standing up? That that's how we're saying that makes us a man? Where do you people come from? Audacity. You are out of touch. With America and definitely black America. We want this economic hell to end. Period. That's called manning up. In a strange twist of fate, you helped us make this decision. Mr. Obama, you are here mentally scolding us like an elder to children in the neighborhood. Dear sir, we are not children. We are men. Men that work, pay bills, raise our families. And in the end, we love, we feel, we cry, we bleed. We make plans for a better life for our children. That's America. You're in the way of that opportunity. It took us a while to see through it. We didn't figure it out. We're not that same old black community of the last few years. That generation that watched political buffoonery, politicians cozying up to jack leg preachers and so called civil rights leaders who don't give a damn about our struggle. We didn't figure y'all out. You, sir, gotta come better than that. Play the female card and challenge our manhood. You don't have any currency here. You haven't put no stock in us. No sweat in us. No solid gainful time spent with us. You can't withdraw anything from us because you didn't put nothing in us. 
It's hard to cash a check with symbolism, baby. You're tugging at the light switch, but ain't no lights. You see, we don't believe in you anymore. Your blackness isn't a pass or pathway to our hearts. I said your blackness isn't a pathway nor a pass to our hearts. We ain't feeling you. And we sure ain't feeling Carmel. That Bidenomics, baby, we not going to raise it. You're not seeing a turn out from us again because you never invested in us. Joe Biden once said, if you vote for Trump, you ain't black. How in the hell? Can he define blackness? Hmm? What gives him the right? And what gives you the right to challenge us in our domain after all this democratic neglect and outright migrant policy? of disrespect. You are day late and a dollar short. Like I said earlier, you got the audacity. And you got some nerve.